Hello guys and uh, welcome to the Airbase tutorial number 13. Today I'm going to show you a small little trick uh, that I've been using for quite a while. Uh, it, it might be a very simple feature of Ableton um, but you might have missed it and uh, it's incredibly useful especially when you're working with percussion. Uh, as you might have noticed if you're into producing a little bit um, you notice that basically every producer is using about the same loops. Um, um, some make their own, some use um, the standard ones, some try to cover up the, the defining sounds of some certain loops by just adding more loops to, to cover your tracks. Or you could slice your own uh, loops from the loops that you actually have. That way you make it like a new interpretation of the loops that you have and you don't have to uh, have them sounding like in all the other tracks. So let me show you how you can do that. Let's take a loop here. Fairly basic. You could just drag this out and start slicing it, um, sorry, um, like sound for sound and start rearranging stuff and, and duplicating and all that stuff. Uh, but it's quite time consuming and there's a much nicer way to do that. That is to bring up the loop and you notice uh, with the warp uh, turned on, you have these transients uh, showing up that are basically just um, putting a marker where something new is happening. So you have a marker for each and every uh, new sound in the, in this percussion loop. And if we listen to the loop again, it sounds about the same all the way. So just let's just uh, shorten it a little bit. So there we go. We have a short loop. Now what we're going to do is going to right click the clip and uh, select slice to new midi track. And this, what it's going to do, it's going to take uh, this clip, this loop, and divide it into small parts based on where the transients are. There are some other settings if you want to slice it all into 16 bit, uh, 16 bar, uh, sixteenths. Uh, well, basically uh, any way you want there. And you can use only warp markers if you want that as well. But I'm going to use the transient setting and uh, just slice it the built-in way. What, are gonna do, what it's going to do now, it slices it all up. One, two, three, four, five, six different sounds is going to be sliced. And if we go to this new channel made here, you can see that there are six sounds being made here. And if you press the play button, you can hear them. And as you might have noticed when I passed by there, uh, it also makes a midi clip of how um, of the loop, so basically it's picking the timing out of where, where they are timed and it's also mapped those slices to each and every key right here. So if we pre-listen, we can hear. So with all these time, timing correct and all the sounds uh, in place, if you press this button, you will have the same sounds as in the original loop. From here, you can start. You can start quantizing it and make it uh, tighter to your beat, depending on what you're looking for. You can also start to rearrange the stuff. Let's bring in a kick for that. And that's all nice and well, isn't it? However, there are some controllers that are being automatically uh, assigned when you slice it. And you can make your own uh, connections uh, any way you want with the included um, settings here, uh, depending on what you want to control what. But let's just stick to the the, the default ones. And uh, those are, I mean, you should know attack, decay, sustain, release by now. Uh, so you can modify, these are all connected to all the slices. So if you press play and I start manipulating these, it's going to change all the sounds. Let's check it out. This is where you're really starting to make your own uh, 
kind of loop from uh, an existing loop. But there are some small uh, extras you can do as well here. You have all the slices if you open up the whole rack here. You have all the slices. You can see in the little simple, uh, simpler here that it's been auto sliced to each and every part of your loop because that's the loop that we're playing right here. The, f the great thing here is that each and every slice here is its own module so you can start adding effects to whichever you want. So let's find that uh, rim shot kind of snare drum here. Let's use this one. Here we can add our own defect, uh, effects. We can, let's say, drop a ping pong delay after it. And it's just like in any other um, channel in Ableton. This is just um, adding instruments and effects the way you want it. Thing is, now that I drop this on this instrument, it only affects that instrument. Let's just, for the sake of this tutorial, add some reverb to one instrument. Make it really small and wide. So here you all of a sudden have endless possibilities to remake your loops and adjust them the way you want. You can re-pitch them if you want to. So there you go. Easy way to start rearranging your loops any way you want. And you can, if you want to, complete your loop with some more instruments instead of adding another channel you got all these other sl uh, slots to just drop your samples into and incorporate into the um, this framework so if you just uh, grab um, like a uh, bass drum isn't the best example but if you drop one here it will show up as another slot up here so you can actually just remove the kick that I had for here so Well, there you have a simple trick to um, make new loops from old overused ones. So um, get going, try it out. See you soon. Take care.